All right, welcome back guys. If you have ever wanted to remove dark spots from an image or even do a little bit of retouching, then this video is for you. We are going to take this image from this to this. So let's get inside Photoshop and let me show you how. All right, welcome back guys. I hope you are doing well. So this is the image we want to correct. If I zoom in on this image, you can see that we have some dark spots on this lady's face. And I think by now you know that Photoshop is the best program that can handle this type of problems. So I'm going to start by pressing Ctrl 0 to make sure the image fit to screen. And then I'm going to go to my adjustment layers and add the curves adjustment layer. Because currently as we look on this image, the highlights are overblown. So I'm just going to go to the curves property right here. And the way it works is by either choosing a channel. So you can click on this pull down menu to select the red, the green or the blues. But this is a simple example. So let's just keep it on RGB. To reduce the highlight, I'm just going to create a point somewhere in the middle here and then just drag it down a little, just like so. Now the next adjustment layer I'm going to add will be color balance. So I'm going to go to adjustment layers and choose color balance. And again, this is something which we are going to be looking into greater details in the future. So kindly subscribe to this channel to stay up to date. But just a quick note, you notice you can come over here to where it says the tone and you can choose the shadows, the mid-tones or the highlights. The shadows will represent the darkest pixels of the image and the highlights will represent the lightest pixels of the image. Mid-tones will be something in between the shadows and highlight. So let us select the mid-tones. And while I was trying to test this demonstration out, I came up with the following values. So for the cyan, I'm going to enter a value of 48 and then I'll press the tab key to go to the next value. Then I'm going to enter 16 and 17 respectively. Now the next thing we have to do is to add a brand new layer on top. So I'm going to go to the layers panel and hold the alt key and click on this plus icon. I'm going to give a name to the layer and hit enter. The reason we are creating this layer is so that we can be able to see all the modifications we are going to make and if we were to work on the original background that would not be a recommended way of working as it is going to be destructive. So with the new layer selected, I am going to go to my toolbar and select the spot healing brush tool. And of course, if you have been following the channel, I've explained before that any tool you select on the toolbar will have different settings on the options bar. So with the spot healing brush tool, we can adjust such as the size of the brush, change the drawing blend mode and all these other settings. One important setting you need to make sure it is checked is the sample all layers. Because if I were to uncheck this button and then since I have the retouch layer selected, if my intention is to remove the dark spots here by painting with the spot healing brush tool, nothing is going to happen. So let us try that out. I'm going to increase the size of my brush and just try to paint here. You see? nothing happens. That is because the original layer we have here on the layers panel has nothing in it. So to be able to make sure Photoshop samples the pixels from all the layers in this document, we have to make sure sample all layers is checked. Now I can make sure my retouch layer is selected and then if I paint on these dark spots to remove them, you see Photoshop does a very good job this time removing those dark spots because it did not only look at the retouch layer, but it read information from all the layers in this particular document. So, the purpose of skin retouching or removing dark spots is to make sure that you remove them, but still keep your subject as clean and natural as possible. So, after doing modifications, if you notice that you have over distorted the image, then you have gone way too far. So, I'm just going to continue painting on these other spots to get rid of them, just like so. Now I notice that around the neck here we have this dark spot so I'm going to reduce the size of my brush even further and just paint on that dark spot just like so. Even around the nose here, I can just click there. Now if we return to the layers panel, we can be able to click on this eye beside the retouch layer to see the before and after. So let us click on this eye and you see these changes are back and if we enable the retouch layer, we see the modifications we have made. Now this is a very simple example, but it is simple examples like this that help you understand the concepts better. And when you start working with Photoshop professionally, it is always a good thing to stay organized. So one way to stay organized is by arranging your layers and grouping things when necessary. 
So to group layers, I'm going to make sure the retouch layer is selected and then I'll shift click on the curves one layer. That will select everything in that sequence and then I'm going to press Ctrl G to group them. Now the next thing I have to do is to make sure that the viewer's eye is on this lady's face and not on this negative space right here. So what I'm going to do to solve that problem is to add a brightness adjustment layer. So let us go to this button and click and then choose brightness and contrast. On the brightness properties panel, let us take the brightness down to minus 42. And if you have followed the channel for a while, in the previous lectures, I explained that we have two properties here. If you click on this icon with the brightness and contrast, you will have brightness and contrast sliders. But if you click on this icon with the max or the layer max thumbnail, we will have the layer max and then density and feather. So I'm going to make sure the layer max thumbnail is selected and then let us minimize this panel for a moment. And I'm going to select my brush tool. I'm going to hold the Alt key and then right mouse click and drag it to the right to increase the size of my brush. Now I'm going to make sure that the max thumbnail is selected and then I'm just going to click somewhere in the middle here making sure that the foreground color here is set to black. So I'm just going to click here and you see that we now have a focal point. I'm just going to right click and take down the size of my brush. Now we have created a focal point but the transition to the background is very sharp. We want to make it softer so that it blends with the background naturally. So with the layer mark selected, I'm going to go to the properties panel and then simply increase the feather value up to 135 and minimize the panel. So just by doing that, we are able to create this kind of vignetting effect around the edges. If you look closely, you can notice that the edges here look darker while the focal point is on the lady's face, which is actually what we wanted. To see what difference the brightness and contrast layer made, let us click on this icon to see the before and after. So here's the before and here's the after with that layer added. So by doing these little adjustments, we ended up taking the image from this to this. And you can see that the lady looks natural and clean. That is the purpose of skin retouching. In future videos, we are going to go deeper into skin retouching guys, so kindly subscribe to this channel to stay up to date. I hope you can now grab your existing photograph, maybe with dark spots or blemishes, and manually remove them inside Photoshop like a professional. So thank you for following along, and I'm going to see you in the next one tomorrow. Bye bye.